Welcome to this Windows channel and this is uh, kind of a little, um, you know, update on the situation where we are at with the uh, Spring Creators update. If we believe the uh, indications within uh, the bug bash uh, that we have right now for insiders, well, um, it seems that there's a good chance that the um, edition, the next edition of Windows 10, which is still codenamed Redstone 4, and stated for barely more than a month away remember that we're supposed to have it's it's the numbers of the different files are still at 1803 that means march of 2018 it's barely more than a month away and uh, of course it could be end of march for everybody it could be early april but insiders we will get it in march so we're really getting close to what will be the next version of windows and um I was thinking, you know, of some of the key features there, there's a, a few things. So, you know, first of all, if we look at the browser, Microsoft Edge, the famous browser that nobody likes and nobody loves, which is getting a lot of improvements of different little things that are kind of cool. Um, one of them today was uh, that, I, that I really like is the fact that when you print off of Microsoft Edge, you'll be able to, uh, in certain pages, there will be here on the left side a um, a setting that will you know unclutter the uh, print that you do. So you know you print something and you um, have ads in the page and all of that. Well, you'll be able to clean that up. Um, there's a lot of you know things happening with the fact that it uh, will have many more options to have a better possibility with reading PDFs and EPUB uh, electronic books. Um, still, I don't know what, you know, it's going to do. I, I, Edge is off to a bad start, and I'm really not sure that anything you do will change anything. You know, they've uh, made things a little better, easier to see, easier to, to manage, better way of, you know, importing and exporting um, all the information about uh, the different uh, browsers, if you want to import your favorites or export and so on. Um, you know, syncing capabilities is, is better than ever. Uh, the continue from, you know, a device like your phone is kind of cool also, uh, where, you know, um, it, it adds new capabilities. Will it make Edge more appealing? Um, I don't know. I mean, uh, they've added even codecs for better uh, Edge, um, you know, uh, compatibility with um, what's on the web, especially multimedia stuff. Now, basically, we have the settings part, which is um, also getting, you know, kind of a, a new look. So, you know, this is different from what we have with the fall creators update. So um, it's, it's, you know, they've changed and, and, and transported a lot of the settings from the control panel in here. Uh, they've changed many things, the display settings um, in here. Focus Assist, which was Quiet Hours, which is more advanced with, you know, even priority of different apps and what time do you want to have your Quiet Hours. Now, I don't like the name Focus Assist. I wish they would use either go back to Quiet Hours or, you know, name it. Uh, a lot of people like the Do Not Disturb, and I think it's actually, yes, a great thing. Um, there's a lot of changes, you know, going on with uh, for the gaming side, also with the game bar and everything really really playing around with that um, new options if you have multi graphics adapters um, there's a lot of stuff that's going to happen with that of course uh, data security there is uh, new management you know when we look at uh, first of all uh, windows security the windows defender is named windows security in the security settings has different new security options including account protection uh, device security of all sorts, having, you know, possibility to have a uh, single, uh, you know, kind of core isolation of uh, different apps and stuff, uh, depending on if you can or if your devices support that. One of the big things for people that are going crazy on the privacy side, we are seeing that basically diagnostics and feedback a lot of people wonder, well, what is being sent exactly in diagnostics and feedback? Well, now you can actually enable diagnostics data view. You can see 
even though it's very cryptic and difficult to understand, you can see um, what data is being sent to Microsoft. So I'm sure some people will go through all of that information. Now, delete diagnostics. Now, this is a delete from distance, meaning I want to delete what was sent to Microsoft. So it's um, you got to think that it's something that they're going to do um, and, and hope that they're going to do it, of course. Uh, basically, um, you know, there's uh, privacy options that are added for the different folders and the apps, you know, the security options because of what apps can actually go through all of that, which is kind of interesting. So there's a lot of changes going on in the different areas within um, here. You know, uh, it has quite a lot of little things. The timeline feature is kind of cool. You just click there and now the problem is it doesn't support third party, um, third party apps, but it's really cool because you have, and you can see what you were doing in the past few days. If you use, of course, and that's the problem, you got to use uh, Microsoft Edge. If you're browsing, you got to use the Universal Windows platform apps. Uh, that is a useful and a fine, nice feature. But the problem is if people use Chrome and Chrome, there's no update to actually integrate Chrome within this or you use different third party programs that don't record anything. Timeline becomes kind of useless, basically. Um, for a few questions that people have asked me, some people have said, well, you know, is each version kind of a little heavier and slower than the one before? Not really. They've done a pretty good job with all of these different versions to keep this at um, a good speed. I mean, I don't see any slowdown. The only slowdown I've seen in the past few weeks is due to the, you know, processor specter and meltdown fixes that actually do slow down especially older PCs. But apart from that, Windows itself is not sluggish or anything. You know, lots of improvement of inter, you know, connectivity with Bluetooth, with all sorts of devices. They're making a, you know, they're, they're kind of doing a great job. Um, one of the things that I've noticed also is, and a lot of people are asking that, why would Microsoft not at some point say, hey, you know what? Uh, instead of calling this Windows 10 Spring Creators Update or whatever, why don't we call this, I don't know, some kind of like, well, we'll call this a fresh new version of Windows 10, you know, um, part two or something. I, I'm making this up, but obviously a lot of people are saying, why not kind of refresh and say, look, this is, because frankly, every time we get one of these feature updates, it's a new version of Windows 10. It's totally Totally a new version of Windows 10. New features, new things in there that are kind of interesting. So, you know, we're moving ahead and um, it is interesting. But still, thinking of that, when we look at everything and, you know, Fluent Design going everywhere, um, one of the things that I kind of, um, that that's still there is that for a lot of people, we'll be moving ahead, once again, to a new version of Windows 10. And that new version of Windows 10 will simply not, people won't, won't see really much what's happening, especially if you're not the one playing around with settings and stuff like that. You might not even see the reason behind what's happening, uh, even though, you know, there's uh, fluent design everywhere and, and settings are change and even Microsoft Edge has some tweaking. For the most part, a lot of people will just not know anything and say, well, I don't see what's different. So uh, kind of interesting. And uh, so we're, you know, barely more than a month away. I don't expect at this point to have that many more new features. We've had a few new features uh, in this build, 17093. We will, we're in the bug bash, um, meaning that we're trying to find bugs of all kinds. And um, basically we are really getting near um, the finalized version for another version of Windows 10, which is the uh, Spring Creators Update. So uh, that's coming up. You know, I, I would say that for most of you that are regular folks, you'll get it in starting beginning of April. Of course, it's going to do the same thing as every other version up to until now. Start rolling out slowly, making sure that everything is all right, and then it's going to go faster and faster. 
and um, you know in a few months everybody will be there but it's still you know a update that will be we'll start slow and then we move on to more and more computers so that's the state of things where we are at as we are you know if we give a beginning of april for everybody we're technically two months away from everybody starting to get the new spring creators update and uh, for insiders well you know a couple of weeks before so we'll be late march so a month and a half maybe as uh, we're getting closer and closer to the latest and newest version of windows 10. if you enjoy my videos please subscribe give us thumbs up thank you for watching